Okay. So for uh, uh, today, the uh, agenda uh, will uh, will cover uh, what uh, um, we are uh, cooking for uh, the upcoming uh, Uyuni 2023 or six. Uh, then uh, Pascal uh, will uh, tell us more about uh, the, the current states. And uh, uh, the, the last item for today uh, is to um, also uh, mention uh, when you can uh, hear more about uh, Uyuni and uh, in this particular case uh, at the ongoing Open Source Conference and also at the uh, SUSECON. But uh, yeah, let's uh, start. So what uh, uh, you will uh, see uh, in the uh, new release uh, of uh, Uyuni. Uh, well, we have uh, several things uh, uh, cooking on. Um, the most uh, prominent uh, is the switch uh, uh, for uh, uh, the server uh, proxy uh, to a new base system. So we are going to move uh, uh, from LIP 15.4 uh, to LIP 15.5. Uh, so of course, uh, uh, when the release uh, will be available, uh, make sure that you are reading uh, carefully the release notes uh, and in particular all the steps for uh, um, installing the, the, new, the new version. Uh, but uh, uh, looking also a bit more uh, uh, under the hood, uh, we will have uh, the new SALT version, in particular SALT uh, uh, 2006.0. Uh, uh, we will have uh, uh, the new PostgreSQL 15. Uh, as I already mentioned before, uh, uh, we will have uh, uh, some uh, changes and in particular the uh, recurrent custom states uh, uh, that uh, Pascal will uh, uh, present uh, later. Uh, then uh, um, for uh, the task task job, uh, um, there's uh, these, uh, this new system profile refresh uh, that should uh, uh, support and help you uh, with, uh, with the job. And uh, um, probably you also heard about uh, PTF, uh, also more in the context of uh, uh, Susan Manager and uh, uh, system with uh, subscriptions. But uh, uh, this feature is available also with uh, with Uyuni, so uh, with, uh, with the new release uh, that uh, um, will be available in, uh, in June, it will be also possible to uh, install uh, uh, PTFs uh, directly from, uh, from Uyuni. Of course, you need uh, uh, you will need uh, a, a subscription for uh, uh, interacting uh, uh, with the uh, SUSE um, customer uh, center. But uh, yeah, the, the feature is uh, of course uh, uh, available. And uh, with uh, uh, the uh, next uh, um, community awards, uh, uh, you will also learn more uh, about uh, this, uh, this feature. Uh, then, uh, looking at uh, the new products uh, that uh, will be uh, enabled, um, we will have uh, the, the new uh, SUSE Linux Enterprise Server Micro 5.4, uh, and of course, also the uh, Open SUSE Leap uh, Micro 5.4. Uh, last but not least, uh, um, we are starting uh, with uh, uh, the Google Summer of Code uh, uh, sessions. Uh, actually, uh, we are uh, in the um, bonding phase, uh, that uh, it's uh, an initial phase uh, where uh, uh, the uh, interns uh, are starting to interact uh, with the community and uh, are starting to uh, get familiar with, uh, with the code. So the, the first uh, uh, patches are uh, approaching uh, and uh, uh, the program uh, will uh, will end uh, in uh, um, on mid November. So uh, for uh, the next uh, unit release, uh, not everything will be available, but for sure something uh, uh, will uh, will also uh, start uh, to to be to be visible. And uh, the project that we are covering uh, for uh, this uh, Google Summer of Code uh, session um, are uh, um, around uh, uh, the security auditing, uh, in particular uh, going to um, to have uh, uh, more automation and uh, um, going to incorporate uh, uh, the uh, oval uh, data. And the other project uh, that uh, um, we are starting uh, is for uh, uh, improving uh, the accessibility uh, of uh, Uyuni. Uh, stay focused because uh, we will also uh, start to have uh, some, uh, uh, to share more uh, news about the, uh, the project uh, and uh, how the uh, the changes uh, uh, will uh, will land uh, on uh, on Uyuni. 
and uh, yeah then uh, the other the other topic uh, that i was mentioning is indeed uh, uh, the uh, Open SUSE conference and the uh, SUSECON, but uh, uh, before uh, uh, going uh, into details, uh, uh, let me uh, um... Uh, let me uh, give the, uh, the stage to, to Pascal for uh, uh, presenting you uh, the um, recurring states and the, the news from uh, uh, this, uh, this feature. Pascal? Okay, I guess you can hear me fine. I'm going to try to share my screen now. And if everything goes right, you should see my screen with a browser right now. Yep, correct. Yep, uh, correct. Susan Manu, yeah. yeah, okay. Uh, I forgot to rename it to Uni for the community hours, but yeah, just pretend it says Uni instead of Susan Manager here. Um, okay, so for the recurring states, I think it's best to just show you what changed. So um, let's start by, do, by going to a system. And then you already see in the main tabs here um, that there is now a recurring actions tab. So this is essentially the same view that was previously in, in states. And then it's set here recurring states. Um, but because we in the future want to expand this recurring action framework to potentially other actions like CLM or like recurrent CVE audit, for instance, um, we thought it would be better to have it as a main tab here. Um, so you are already familiar with the recurring high state feature, I guess, since it's been in the product for two to three years already. Um, but we have now added um, a new possibility, which is custom state. Uh, I will get into more details uh, in a moment. But for this view, we also added some new uh, columns, which are the target name and, and the action type. Um, since we now have more action types, for now it's custom state and high state. As mentioned, there will be more in the future. And we also have the target name. That, uh, previously, it was actually not really obvious um, which um, entity, so whether it's a system or a system group or an organization and the schedule the target so um, yeah now this is more apparent and you can even click on them and it will directly forward you to to that entity um, another thing that changed is here we are on the system level right now you will see that um, there is also group and organization recurring schedules so just for the purpose of demoing this i created some schedules here um, so you can see this. Um, one more thing to mention here is schedules that are not targeting the entity or are not for the entity. Uh, that was not intended. Um, they will appear here as read only. So you can click the details action here, um, but you cannot edit or delete them. If you want to do that, you would have to click on the link and then it would open transfer you to the entity where you can then uh, change that if you want to. Okay, so let's jump right into creating a custom state. So this was previously already the, um, the interface we used to create the, the high state. Um, there is one new addition here. This is this, um, yeah, this select window here where you can uh, select the action type that you want to create. Um, so this is now the new one, which says custom state. So let's just give it some kind of name. And then you, here you can um, select the schedule. Um, so basically the recurrence when you want the schedule to be executed, uh, the action to be executed. And if you scroll actually further down, then there is what's new for the custom states. Um, so we introduced some, um, so made public some of the internal user manager states or uni states, I should say, um, which is yeah listed here. I think it's a total of 12 or something states that we exposed. Um, yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory what they do, but in case you're not sure, we also provided a description here. So you just mouse over, over these eye icon and it will tell you exactly what the state is going to do. 
Um, so how does it actually work? Um, basically, ca you can click yourself to gather um, a list of states and then also define in which order you want the states to be executed. And those states are then going to be executed on a recurrent schedule that you define. So let's just select some here, whether this makes sense or not, it doesn't matter right now. Um, but I just selected these two, so third and the hardware profile update. And in the next step, you can actually like define the order you want them to be executed. So whether or not you want tests to be executed first, and then you confirm, and it will basically show you your selection here. And then you have everything defined and can create the schedule if you want to. And the details of the schedules are then going to show you like which states are going to be, be executed here. You can also edit and delete them from, from there on. Okay, so going back to the schedule, there's probably one state that is notable that was not um, there previously that we added. It's called up to date. And basically what it is going to do is it's going to, if I go over here, update the system and it will actually reboot if required. So this is something I should mention since dates don't really work with reboots in between, like Exalt doesn't really support that. You should always um, like schedule these reboots at the end, which means this up to date um, state should ideally always um, executed as the last state in your list. We also have um, have the plan to split the state up into two steps. So one that updates the system and one additional step that um, will actually do the reboot. So you have a little bit more freedom there. Um, we didn't get to implement um, this yet, but it is on our to-do list. Um, as you can see, there's not only internal states. So we created a new icon with a box around, which would indicate that this is an internal state. The second thing that you can do here is you can define your own config channels, like you could in the past, of course, already. And just like with, um, with the configuration channels here, um, you probably see it's the same interface that we reused. Um, you can use the config channels that you defined and particularly the, the config state channels in this case. Um, and you can def basically define your own states there and like put them into um, in, to, in between even the internal states that you have and then like execute them so that you have the freedom here to, to include your, your own states. Um, one thing I should say about the ordering. So, Per default, um, SALT is going to execute this in the order that you defined here. However, there is some exceptions. SALT allows to um, put a ordering parameter into the state files. So if you have this in your custom created states, and you can see this, this is just some simple one. Um, if you have a order in there, um, it's going to mess with the order that you defined here. Um, so if you, in your custom states, um, basically state that this should be executed first, then yeah, this is going to mess with it. And the same thing is true for dependencies. So if you have a state that depends on another state, that salt will actually detect that and yeah, switch around the order. So for now, um, if you want to really see if you have orderings in there, if you really want to see in which order um, they are going to be executed, I would suggest you to run one in a test mode and then look at the at, look at the output and then it will tell you in which um, order each state have actually been um, been executed. Um, in the future, we want to to include this so you will directly see um, the ordering that you define. but um, that is something for for a future release. So um, like with this list here. So as I said, uh, I should probably talk a little bit about, about targeting. So there is the target type that you see, and it can be minion group or organization. What this means is um, these schedules that have been defined on the group level, like we can for now go to one of the system groups. 
like say it's this top system group and I have two groups here and let's select one of them. And then you see you also have this recurring actions tab here and there you can, if you want so create your group recurring actions. And these group recurring actions are going to affect every minion as well that is in this system group. So that is why uh, they show up here as well. Um, and the same is true for the organization. So I'm currently in the SUSE organization. If I create a, um, a schedule on organization level, it is going to affect um, the entire organization, basically all the systems as well. So um, yeah, if you want to have a recurring state schedule that uh, affects many of your entities, just put them in a group or if there's something you want for your entire organization, then yeah, you can just create uh, the this one in the organization. And one more thing I should mention that we had previously as well. If you go in this main menu on the side and go to schedule and then recurring actions, um, it is going to list all of the recurring action schedules that, you, that are existing basically. And for editing, um, it's the same thing. Um, you will have to select the entity here and you can only see the details basically. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is it for the UI part, um, but I should also mention maybe what we did to the API. Let me see because I messed a little bit for my tabs here. Ah, yeah. Okay. So um, basically, if you just go to, to API, then you will see here um, these four um, namespaces. So the one that was existing previously for the high state is the recurring action one. If you select it, um, it's going to have all the, the methods that uh, are previously there. So we didn't change anything about this one, but we did deprecate it. So this one is going to be removed in, in one of the future releases. So this is just high state right now. And what we introduced are the new ones. It's like recurring. So it's like the top level namespace. And then beyond that, you have like recurring custom and recurring high state, which are for the high state and um, yeah, custom state actions respectively. So if we first have a look at the the top level namespace, the recurring, um, it's going to have the methods that will apply independent of what type it is. Like the delete, if you want to delete a schedule, um, then it does not matter whether it's a high state or um, a custom state, just like that. Same is for the other two. Um, then if you go, for instance, for the custom, you will see you have the option to create list or, or update them respectively. and create or update is the same for the, the high state. And this list available will actually um, give you the list of all the custom channels that are available to this user. So that is basically the states that we support. So um, that is the list that you are also going to see in the UI. Uh, let's go there real quick, um, like, like this one basically. And that is actually a high state. We want a custom state. Yeah, right. So it is going to give you back this list where you can then see what is actually supported. And we might um, add more states there in the future, depending also on user suggestions. So if there's something you want to have included and you think it's missing, um, yeah, just tell us. Great. Okay. I think I've mentioned everything. I, are there any questions so far? And let me switch back to Teams. There is one in the chat, yes. Probably yes. something in the chat. Okay. Are they able to be synchronized as a hub architecture deployment? I don't actually mean, I'm not actually sure what you mean of this. Could you, Jeff, could you explain a little bit? Sure. Yeah, so in a hub architecture, you use ISSV2 or the inter-server sync um, version two to synchronize content from a hub server, a hub server to a peripheral server. Um, and that hub architecture is, is implemented when you have a very, 
large number of oh, yeah, points. I see. Typically, yeah, typically over 10,000. I just didn't know if it was one of the elements that you could put in place in the hub and then synchronize down to the peripherals if it is in the content that gets synced. Maybe it's a question for Ricardo or. Uh, yeah, I think I cannot uh, actually directly answer that. Uh, I, okay. We have not tried during development if this would work. Ricardo, I think you just wanted to say something. So hey, please. Uh, hey Ricardo. <laughs> hey, see you guys. Um, so um, this has uh, an API uh, made available to, to configure this recurring uh, actions. So we can make a call to the Hub XML PC API um, to create everything on the peripherals and uh, use the, the broadcast to all method. We should basically create okay. um, uh, the same. We didn't test it, but it should work. Mm -hmm. Because it's basically okay, cool. broadcasting the API to the, the API call to all the peripherals at the same time, and if you have like that script on the on the on the hub, it should have exactly the same uh, configuration across all each peripheral. But I didn't test it yet, Thanks. but uh, it should work. <laughs> yep, it should. <laughs> all right, thanks, man. Yeah, the famous last words. All right. <laughs> yep, exactly. Okay, so are there any more questions? Just don't be shy and speak up. <laughs> Not a question, but yeah, one of one of the feedback that we recently received um, from the user is that uh, they have different configuration channels. So in other words, in other words, yeah, straight channels, and uh, they so they execute some of those straight channel, um, but like they are dependent on each other. So, for mm -hmm. example, the second straight channel they would execute only if the first one was executed so it goes in the conditional thing but uh, that that use case that again you know came up again and again and that's something that yeah, we will probably be looking when we will be looking at probably in conditional action chain so yeah i just wanted to mention it here because it just came up recently again and now we have this demo and um, just wanted to make sure that yeah you uh, you guys are also aware about that one okay yeah great thank you Okay, if there is nothing else, I think there is more stuff that Marina wants to tell you. So <laughs> I can stop sharing and hand back over to Marina. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Pascal. Let me just go to the right slide. <clears throat> yes. Uh, okay, so um, as I was um, anticipating at the beginning, uh, um, we we are having uh, uh, some conferences. Uh, um, the Open Source Conference actually, <clears throat> sorry, uh, started uh, today, and uh, SUSECON uh, uh, will start uh, uh, in, uh, in June, and uh, Uyoni will be uh, part uh, of both the conferences. So I want to give you uh, some details uh, on what you could see and uh, how. So starting uh, with the Open Source Conference. Uh, you can find uh, um, at the uh, main uh, uh, website uh, uh, directly the, the full schedule uh, of the conference, uh, also with uh, uh, all the details uh, for uh, joining from uh, from remote, etc. Uh, and for what uh, concern uh, uh, Uyoni, we have uh, a presentation directly from uh, Cedric uh, that will happen tomorrow at uh, 1.45. Um, physically, the conference is happening uh, in uh, Nuremberg, but uh, you can also join uh, directly online uh, and uh, um, view the streaming. Uh, and uh, the uh, conference is also providing uh, a, a channel on Telegram for uh, asking questions. So even if uh, you can't be there uh, directly, you have in any case the chance to uh, interact with. Uh, uh, with, uh, in this case, uh, Cedric, but also of the other uh, attendees. And uh, yeah, this uh, presentation um, will uh, give you uh, more details uh, uh, on uh, how uh, you can uh, uh, run Oyoni uh, using uh, uh, K3S. And uh, uh, of course, the, uh, the scenario is, uh, is ALP and uh, this new way to, uh, to 
create, uh, I mean, it's not just one system, but uh, it's this uh, uh, new way to, to develop uh, uh, the, the new SUSE, but also the new uh, open SUSE versions. And uh, of course, we need to look at, uh, <laughs> at the future, we need to look at uh, uh, new technologies. So of course, uh, we are also um, looking uh, at these uh, uh, changes uh, for, uh, for Yoni. And uh, yeah, the presentation will uh, uh, explain you uh, how uh, these uh, uh, change, uh, these uh, features uh, uh, have been uh, uh, developed and are still uh, under development uh, with uh, all the details that, uh, that you will need for uh, understanding also how to test it uh, yourself. So this appointment is for uh, uh, tomorrow uh, around lunch, lunch time. Uh, so don't forget it uh, and uh, have a look and join. Uh, the other sessions uh, uh, that I want to um, uh, talk about uh, are at uh, SUSECON. Uh, SUSECON this year will be uh, in uh, a double format, so in person and uh, in uh, a, a digital fashion. Uh, the um, in-person version uh, will uh, take place uh, in, uh, in Munich, uh, directly um, in uh, June. So um, our uh, Eugenie presentation will uh, uh, take place uh, on uh, June 20 uh, from uh, 6.20 uh, in, the, in the evening. And uh, um, there is also, um, as I was mentioning before, uh, the SUSE Digital, uh, SUSECOM Digital, and this one will happen just uh, um, uh, after uh, the uh, in person uh, version. So, with uh, uh, SUSECOM Digital, uh, you will have a, uh, a chance to uh, also view the, the previous presentation, but uh, you will also get uh, extra content. Uh, um, that uh, was not uh, presented directly uh, live uh, in the uh, Munich edition. And for uh, SUSECOM Digital, uh, we have uh, uh, two extra presentations. Uh, one uh, um, will, uh, um, will be from uh, um, Alex and from uh, Julio, and uh, they will uh, uh, present uh, uh, how, in general, we are uh, making uh, uh, Uyuni and uh, SUSE Manager, and of course, how you can uh, uh, contribute to the to the project, and uh, the the other presentation um, is uh, about how to contribute as a, a non developer. Uh, this one uh, will be held by uh, Raúl, Julio, and uh, Miguel. Um, for uh, uh, all the details, uh, how to uh, register and so on, uh, there is the main uh, SUSECON uh, website where you can find. Uh, uh, all the details, uh, the schedule, uh, and you can also look uh, uh, at the at the other sessions, of course. And uh, yeah, that's it uh, for uh, uh, let's say the, the news. Uh, of course, if you have uh, any question, uh, feel free to to ask. Uh, you can also directly join, uh, uh, opening the microphone and uh, directly speaking if you want, or you can just use the chat. Don't be shy. <laughs> Let me look at the chat if there is anything. For the moment, seems not. OK, then uh, if uh, you don't have any question, um, let me also add uh, uh, that, uh, as we announced uh, in the past weeks, uh, um, we moved uh, some of the mailing list uh, uh, directly to, um, to the discussions on uh, GitHub. Uh, feel free, of course, to provide feedback, uh, to ask, uh, for example, to reorganize uh, categories uh, or to, to share feedback uh, on uh, how we can uh, uh, make your contributions uh, easier uh, to, to Yoni. OK. Um, any last minute question uh, or feedback to share? Seems not. OK, so I think uh, we can uh, conclude for uh, for today. 
Uh, thanks a lot for joining. And uh, as usual, uh, feel free to, uh, to, to share feedback also uh, after the, the session. Thanks a lot for, for joining. Oh, bye everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 Thanks. Ciao, ciao. Thank you. Bye.